Hey there everybody, this is Lee with Creative Two Time Mom and it's time once again for another Books of the Month video. So welcome to my channel. My name is Lee and this is Creative Two Time Mom. This channel is all about homeschooling, parenting, and thriving in the day today. Or in the case of today's video, really good books. This video is part of a series called the Books of the Month Collaboration that is being hosted by myself as well as Ingrid at The Simple Rugged Path and Ingrid at Mommy and Mia Homeschool Chronicles. I will link both of their channels down below as well as the playlist. Each month we create videos and collaborations like this one sharing the books that we read. I always share the books that I read personally as well as the books that we did as read-alouds with the kids. Now, my kids read so much that I have had requests to share the books that they read on their own, but there is so many books, especially with my second grader. Um, I don't think I could fit them all into one video, <laughs> but maybe in the future, maybe in the future I will let him just share with you guys. As for what I read in the month of April, let's get started. So I shared back at the beginning, I think it was the middle of March, I shared a spring reading list video and I will link that down below. It has been one of my goals this year to read through some of the books that I have on my Kindle. I'm not usually a big ebook fan, I like a real physical copy of a book. But you guys know it's really easy to pick up a book on Amazon sometimes for pretty inexpensive and then it just sits in my log for a really long time. So I'm not a big ebook fan, but it was my goal this year to get through some of those books that I have stored up that I found on a good deal on Amazon. So I included several of them in my spring reading list and um, I wanted to get started on a few of those this month. So the first one was The Confident Homeschooler by Pam Barnhill. Now this is one of those books that I picked up really inexpensive, I think probably 99 cents or free, and it was a super quick read. In fact, I think I read it in a day very, very fast. Uh, I must say that I'm really glad that I did not spend money on this one. I just found it to be just not very revolutionary, I guess. I, maybe if I was a first time homeschooler, I would have gotten more out of this book. But as someone who's been on this journey for quite a while, the information in the book was pretty redundant. I really was not impressed by this one at all, which is so sad because I love Pam Barnhill's philosophy and the way she teaches and engages kids, and I just felt like this book fell really flat for me. So if you've had a different experience, I am so sorry. I hate giving bad reviews to books, but this was not one that uh, I just was not impressed with this one. The second book that I read off my Kindle was called Faithful Families. And this was one of those books that I had really high hopes for. And I think the subtitle was something about creating sacred moments. And I thought, oh, that is what I need as a mom. I need the tools to help capture my kids' hearts. And I was not impressed with this book. It was so... Um, kind of mystical. She included, she drew from so many different religions and not that I'm opposed to that, I think we can all learn from each other, but in a way that I felt very uneasy about some of the things that she was incorporating and encouraging in our families. Uh, of course the focus of the book is creating um, traditions and habits based around religion and passing on our beliefs to our kids, but it was so, uh, I want to say new agey, just in that it was like all roads lead to the truth, and I just was not comfortable with this book at all. There were a few things that I took away from it that I thought, yeah, I could incorporate that to our family, or yeah, that was a good idea, but I actually put the book down maybe halfway through because it was just too much. Uh, it was weird. <laughs> I would not recommend this book at all. <laughs> the next book I read was called The Amish Cookie Club by Sarah Price. And this was a review book, so I will link my full review down below. It was a book that I was gifted from the publisher, uh, but all opinions are my own. There's my disclosure. And this was a super light Amish fiction, uh, and you know with a lot of books like this, 
you kind of have an expectancy of how it's going to turn out and this book was no different um, but for me it came at a time where everything in my life was crazy and I just needed a good light read there was one thing about it though that I have to say there was one twist where I was just kind of going along and I thought oh yeah I totally know how this book's gonna end and then right at the end she kind of flipped things on me so as much as it was kind of formulaic and you saw the characters showing an interest in each other and you got this little backstory love story going on right at the end the author flips things on you and kind of throws a curveball at least for me I didn't see it coming this was a new to me author but I really enjoyed this book and I believe she has a sequel coming out called The Christmas Cookie Club and I'm going to definitely be watching for that one. Like I said I will link the full review down below for you to check out. The next book I read, I actually do have a copy in front of me here today, and it's called Renaissance Kids. This is by Olivia Shoup. Um, I took a class at my church that was covering the concepts and the ideas behind this, and so in conjunction with the class, I was also reading this. And the subtitle of this book is Preparing Your Children to Thrive in a Rapidly Changing World. I don't know that I would purchase this book again. The class completely yeah I couldn't even put a value on the class amazing writing some of the principles and the concepts that she and her husband incorporated into their family amazing amazing I would come home every week with just sheets full of notes and tell my husband every Tuesday night he would hear that was by far the best parenting class I ever took the book on the other hand I felt like was kind of um, the same thing I was getting in the classes and not as well fleshed out because you know there's not the same as when you hear a live speaker. So the book has some really great general concepts of talk to your kids about the future, prepare them for social pressures, this whole thing. But as far as practical application, she was so vague. And I think in some ways that's a good thing because it allows room for Holy Spirit to come in, speak to your heart. It's going to look unique in each family, but as a mom of a teenager and a preteen, sometimes I need a few things spelled out, or at least the beginning steps spelled out to try and get me on that journey. And I didn't feel like this was the book. Was it bad? No. Was it worth it? I bought it used, so it was okay. Um, would I purchase it again? Probably not. If you're looking for really great parenting books, I'm going to link a video down below that I just published a couple weeks ago of my top five parenting books that have changed me as a parent. And this one just didn't come close to those. The next book that I read was a physical book as well, and it was called Beyond Tuesday Morning by Karen Kingsbury. You guys may remember a few months ago I read One Tuesday Morning by Karen Kingsbury, and I said that it absolutely ripped me apart. It is a fictional book based on the events of 9-11 and a case of mistaken identity with a missing firefighter and his wife. And that book completely destroyed me because, um, I was not aware <laughs> of how raw 9-11 still is in my brain, um, you know, almost 20 years later. This is the continuation. This is the second book, and this was actually gifted to me from Ingrid at Mommy and Vale Homeschool Chronicles, and um, I was hoping that this would redeem some of the raw emotion that I had going on from that first book, and it really did. Uh, this second book is a lot about that wife's healing journey and dealing with the aftermath and how do you move on from such a catastrophic event that's not just uh, catastrophic for you but you're carrying the weight of an entire nation's emotions and an entire nation's pain and mourning and so she was um, in a lot of ways I think she felt that heaviness that it wasn't just her that it was a whole country in mourning and so this is kind of about how she moved on how she found new life after that and that it was okay to move on it was okay to move on from the things that had happened to her 
and that that didn't mean she didn't care or that she took it lightly but that it was she was healing so this is very very good um as much as i said be cautious of the first one this redeemed it for me and in fact i think i found that my library has a number three in the series so maybe maybe i'll pick that one up next as far as what we read with the kids this month, we were finishing up uh, fairy tales in our morning basket time, and so we had a couple audiobooks in the car that were based around Grimm's fairy tales. I tried to find the one specifically that we had, but I've already had to return it to the library, and when I went on Amazon, I couldn't find the specific one that we had. But uh, any type of original Grimm's fairy tales we were listening to on audiobook, and I have to laugh, they are really, really dark when you get to the original fairy tales um, we all kind of looked at each other like why are we listening to this this is horrific <laughs> they're really really dark everybody's trying to kill everybody everybody's trying to eat everybody there's just craziness chaos going on all the time so that was what we were listening to in the car we've since started a new book but we've just barely gotten it started so i will save it for next month the same thing with our read aloud. We didn't read nearly as much this month with spring break and travel. Uh, the kids have started the Shakespeare Stealer, and but we're not maybe halfway through there. So I will again. That's when I'm going to save for May. So be looking forward to that. This book, on the other hand, A Wrinkle in Time. I read this with my fifth and eighth grader as part of their language arts curriculum, and I saw the movie movie came out what a year ago I saw it with the kids I hated it hated the movie it was so dark and so grim and so it really turned me off I always heard that this was a great book but it really turned me off from reading the book and I started to think about it that you know books are always so much better than the movie so I thought okay well we'll do a book study on this and Brave Writer had a book study guide to go with this book so we decided to incorporate it into our curriculum this year i was completely blown away this is probably one of my top probably 10 kids books um, for that early teen teenage years now that i've read it the movie does not do this justice whatsoever there is so much biblical illusion in here so much about good fighting evil light and darkness being a champion for light being a champion for people loving others um, allowing love to be the driving force that heals that conquers ah and i was shocked it was pretty awesome just sit and read this with the 13 and 11 year old because they were even catching it um, we stopped at one point and noah said oh, was i I caught something in that section that it sounded like it was from the Bible. I know I've heard that before, and it was. It was all tons and tons of biblical allusion. I haven't studied <laughs> all of that, so I don't know if it's one of those things where all roads lead, maybe, but I was super impressed, and do not judge this book by the movie whatsoever. Don't, ju don't recommend the movie. Totally recommend the book. So that's everything that we read throughout the month of April. The books that I read, as well as the books that we read with the kids. Would you leave me a comment down below and let me know what some of your favorite books are from the past month? Also, don't forget to check out all the links down below. I'm going to have links to videos, reviews, uh, my co-host channels, the playlist. I hope that you will find something that will really inspire and spark joy and creativity and inspire you to start reading as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.